Dear investor, in this edition, let us discuss the following topics. One, the macro pulse check. We believe the picture is seeing some headwinds. Two, FPIs have turned big sellers in the month of October and along with it, the supply of new paper in the market is strong. Third, the risk factors that we are seeing today and now are we positioned there. Uh, valuations and uh, ultimately our belief that it continues to be time for alpha. On the first topic, uh, you know, macro picture seeing some headwinds. The quarter two result season is on and the first flush of results have been overall lower than expectations. Banks and autos have delivered lower than expected, though IT services have delivered mixed results. Capital market players including brokerages and AMCs have delivered good numbers. Cement companies delivered multi-year low EBITDA per uh, bag. The result uh, season has affected the earnings expectations for FY25 negatively and the expectations have been brought down. Now, industrial activity has been weak during this uh, quarter as rain spread and intensity has been more than last year. Higher rains uh, reduces the uh, economic activity. Uh, CPI inflation has risen primarily on food prices and this factor along with strong FPI selling and a drop in forex reserves could delay the start of rate cut cycle in India. Amongst quick indicators, vehicle sales are seeing a slowdown as are uh, GST collections. Uh, however, many of these uh, indicators are not surprising. Government spending was strong before elections and took a pause during elections. Um, and then, you know, elections were quickly followed by a very strong monsoon period and that has suppressed uh, industrial activity. Now, uh, government ordering is showing signs of restarting. It should gain momentum as we go forward. Post monsoons, expectations of good farm income is high and we believe economic activity may resume to be stronger soon. Uh, on the second topic, FPI turned sellers and the supply of paper is strong. Now, uh, FPIs which were actually significant buyers in, in September uh, to the tune of $5.9 billion turned strong sellers in October. You know, as the Chinese market rebounded sharply in anticipation of a, a package there, the intensity of the sell-off is high. Until 21st of October, uh, the selling had crossed 10 billion US dollar and continued uh, after that as well. Now, unless this reverses, this is the highest monthly sales by FPI in a month. Uh, more than you know what we saw in the COVID period. Uh, while the Chinese market uh, has entered a consolidation phase, FPIs have continued to sell on one, weaker corporate results and two, rising US bond yields. So September had seen US bond yields crack, we got a lot of money in, you know, October is seeing a reversal of that. Large index sectors like banks are still overweight in FPI portfolios and have seen strong uh, and have seen weak result season and uh, hence the space has continued to see FPI selling. Uh, it could continue for some more time. FPIs have reduced underweight positions in autos, IT, staples and utilities while they have reduced overweight positions in discretionary energy and real estate. Uh, apart from financials. We believe that spaces where the result momentum is weak could prove to be the most vulnerable in such periods. You know, result momentum is weak and FPI holding is high could prove to be the vulnerable spot. Now, while FPIs have been selling, domestic institutions have, have mostly matched uh, the, the selling, but yet, uh, you know, we have seen some correction in the market. While indices tell one story, the broader market has seen a sharper cut. Now, this is also a period when India Inc. is raising record amounts of money through new IPOs, offer of sale, QIPs, etc. Hyundai, one of, one of the largest ever IPO has been completed. 
we watch for good outcomes from IPO. Hyundai has not made money for the investors as yet and could affect new investor sentiment. Now, strong fundraise is also crowding out the secondary market, uh, flows into the secondary market. As yet, new investor momentum as measured by new DMAT uh, opening seem to be sustaining. Uh, eye on risk, uh, well, geopolitical risk has increased with escalation of israel Hamas conflict and now Iran is getting embroiled in it. However, lower oil prices have endured uh, while there was a brief spike. Now, strong FPI selling has resulted in our record high USD uh, reserves falling below the US dollar 700 mark. Uh, US yields, we noted this before, which were declining till the last rate cut decision have shown a sudden spike and the 10 year is again over actually 4.2% as we speak. And, you know, like we said before, it is another reason for continued FPI sales. Now, Chinese market has been buoyant and when that market is buoyant, it sucks liquidity from around all emerging market and that is the other reason. Both of these factors could delay the onset of any rate cut action in, in India, requiring adjustments in the portfolio construct. However, uh, the move to China could have ended as Chinese stimulus was short of expectation and the sharp rally there is being followed by a correction. Valuations. Now, uh, market indices have been at the same level since July with over a 12% earning growth outlook uh, over the next uh, two years. A four-month market consolidation has resulted in nearly 4 to 5% valuation correction. Uh, with the correction in the Chinese market, there is a good chance that our markets also stabilize. We tend to behave differently especially if the U.S. bond yields also start to soften. Indian market uh, is seeing back to GDP ratio improve from, from financial 2020 onwards. This is on account of reversal in losses in banks. They had a large NP accretion in the prior period. A large part, the banks are a large part of the market and also because of the revival in the manufacturing space. China plus one sentiment has played a large role. Focus on indigenization in various spaces and PLI schemes have also helped. Corporate profitability is buoyant for similar reason. It has, it is also aided by operating leverage. We believe that with higher protection accorded to corporate India and with benefits of operating leverage kicking in, there are good chances that the past peak profitability that we attained in 2008 could be crossed in a year or two. Now, higher margins is a significant driver of higher free cash flow generation, ROEs and ROCs. Higher free cash flow generation has resulted in leverage in corporate India falling sharply. Debt equities have fallen. Lower debt equity is seen to be less risky on the business businesses seem richer, higher richness of business results in valuation sustaining at a higher level. While quality of business is the key driver of valuation, growth in earnings, let's say growth in an indicator of growth in free cash flow and discount rates are the other two factors. If we look at long period delivery of earnings in the country, the average is around 12 to 13 percent. Current outlook of earnings going forward is in the similar range, while last few years had seen a significantly higher growth. Now, uh, so here we are uh, as we, we have been over the long period. Now, on the discount rate though, we are better. Interest rates have declined uh, over time and volatility associated with Indian markets have also declined. The other factor that goes into discount rate. This implies a reduction in discount rate versus historical levels. Going forward, there is a possibility that rates decline more, further reading valuations. We hence believe that with large caps trading at average levels of past 10 years, there is a great chance of market at least sustaining the valuation levels that we are at today, if not improving them. 
Overall, market seem to be holding out quite well. Uh, you know, once the FPI selling subsides, we do expect the market to bounce back as domestic flows continue unabated. Big IPOs are behind us and, you know, post quarter two, earning outlook for the second half would get stronger. So, you know, a lot of the factors the markets have digested uh, in the present, uh, the next period could could be stronger. It continues to be time for alpha. Uh, that's the last, last section. You know, as the result season progresses, we are seeing relative weakness in earnings of banks, cement, grocery retail, refineries and autos uh, versus expectations, which are already muted. Large IT companies have delivered mixed results versus their expectations, but their YOY growth were also low. We do expect to see, many of the results are yet to come, we do expect to see renewables, capital goods, mid-cap IT, some results are already uh, declared here and they have been strong, jewelry companies, capital marketplace, defense, new tech kind of spaces to deliver strong results. Our funds have a stronger presence in these spaces. We believe that these spaces have earnings growth tailwinds and the same may provide alpha opportunities to managers. With this, thank you. Wish you all a very happy Diwali and happy festivities. Happy investing. May the good times continue. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.